But over in the book of Acts, and I'm just going to give you this. In Acts 27, there was a great storm came up. Storm by the name of Euryclid. I mean, it would certainly help me to get in the book of Acts. And the Bible says in verse 21, and of course you know the story. Paul was destined to go to Rome. God told him he was going. The captain wanted to set sail at a time when there was going to be some bad weather. Paul told him it would be, but the mariners of the ship listened to the captain of the ship more than they did the man of God. That's why a lot of people get in trouble today. They listen to everybody else but the man of God. But they set sail, and of course in verse 21, they had hit a great storm back in verse number 14, Euryclid, Euryclidon, ever how you want to pronounce it. In verse 21, the Bible says that after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and he said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, he says, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. You know what Paul was doing right there in verse 25? It's called standing on the promises of God. That's what he said. He said, I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. I hear the thunder. No doubt there's probably some rain. Earth's coming. I thought about the storm. I think I kindly mentioned it the other night. How if the Lord allows, if He sends a storm into our life, He will situate that storm, the events that takes place. The yes. Lord don't always stop it. Right, right. Some storms have great intensity with them. Sure. Some storms last longer than others. Right. But if He allows it, if He sends it, He'll situate it in such a way that you and I will find grace in ways we've never known. Sometimes the Lord, He just chooses to get into the storms with us. He's not afraid of the storms when those waves are over our head. Praise God, they're under His feet. But I thought about this one thought. I'm going to give it to you quickly. Verse number 25. Paul said, I believe God Amen. I've heard several in their testimonies and some you may have not even realized it throughout the week that I believe God sent this I believe God allowed this I believe God did this in my life and boy isn't it refreshing to know when your no knows that you know it was God that did it and I'll go ahead and tell you, I believe God sent us up here this week as well. And I'm going to be honest with you. You've been a great blessing to me and Brother Adam. You've been a bigger blessing to us, and we came to hope and to be a blessing. God, you with us to be a blessing to you. And y'all have been a blessing to us far more than you'll ever know. And from the depths of my heart, I want to thank you. All the hospitality, the kindness, the smiles. The, boy, I'm going to tell you, it don't get any better than this. It's a rarity what you have here. I mean, listen, revival we know is for the church. And I've seen it this week. And you've seen it. You've been a part of it as well. And people getting saved, that's just icing on the cake. I just hate, I, I had to run last night to the restroom after service and I didn't get to see Brother Jake do the two-step. 
I'd have done it with him. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm going to tell you, getting saved changes your life. Yes, <laughs> Paul just said, I believe God. And I guess a lot of times, Brother Phil, that's what keeps a lot of people from getting in the big family. They just don't believe God. But I'll go ahead and tell you, if the Lord ever sets his hooks in you through the power of the Holy Ghost, you can keep on running. But I promise you this, I don't believe in irresistible grace. Don't misunderstand me. But I believe he'll get you to that point. You're just going to have to give. Might as go ahead and give in. Yeah. And you know, I know we shouldn't. We can't, we, we can't save as far as preaching and witnessing and testifying. We can't save the whole world. We can't save the whole community and all of our family. But we ought to do our very, very best to make it hard for them to die and go there. <laughs> I really believe that. But Paul said, I believe God. I believe God for a lot of things. I've been trusting Him for years for some things I hadn't yet seen come to pass. And I've experienced God's grace, I can honestly tell you, in ways that I have never known since the last time I was here. But one thing I can tell you, it's, His grace has been sufficient. Night my wife got saved, I'll never forget it. Very night, my, uh, one of my, my former pastor and I, we led her to the Lord at the kitchen table. And the very night she got saved, we were going out on visitation. And she got saved and we went out visiting and all, came back later that night. And she showed me the next morning the verse the Lord gave her. It was over in the, in, I believe it's 2 Corinthians, I believe it is, where Paul said, where the Lord said to Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Boy, how much did I not at that time didn't realize and understand how that grace was going to abound and that grace was going to be manifested in our lives in the days to come. But I can stand for you tonight and give God all the glory and tell you His grace is sufficient. Yes. And if you're here tonight and you're still lost, you've never been saved, I'll go ahead and tell you this, you might as well quit trying to figure it out. You can't figure Him out. Right, right. Those, I thought about those in the days of Noah. They died and went to hell. They had an opportunity to get in the ark. But they died in spite. And listen, they went to hell in spite of a preacher. Noah preached for 120 years. Nobody believed God. They died and went to hell in spite of God's provision. Nobody believed God. There, there the ark was, a type of salvation. They could have got in just like the rest of them, just like Noah and his family. But no, they did How do you know that's the type of salvation? Well, God told Noah and his family, said, come thou in. He was already in there. Yeah. He didn't say, Noah, y'all go on in, I'm coming. Nope. He said, come thou in. And whosoever wills could have came. Yeah. All of those people could have came. But they wouldn't believe God. There was a preacher for 120 years stood and begged them. Noah, what you building? I don't know. Well, why are you building it? God said, build it. What's it going to do? I don't know. God said it's going to rain. What's rain, Noah? I don't know. Noah never seen rain. Noah didn't even really know what he was building. God gave him a blueprint and he went by it. He built it. He's building art. They just wouldn't believe him. Noah said, hey, there's a big flood coming. They wouldn't believe him. You can get on board. They wouldn't do it. But they did. They had a choice. They could have believed God, but they didn't in spite of a preacher, in spite of a provision, and they went to hell in spite of God's patience. Do you realize that the Lord gave them 120 years? I mean, a man of God preaching his heart out. There's this big ark being built. No, I ain't going. You know what kept them from getting in? Pride. 
pride. Boy, I can't get in that ark. No one in his family, a bunch of fanatics. I tell you what, I'd rather be a fanatic, be called what I may be called by the world, know that I got all of this in heaven too. And have the assurance that when I leave this world, I'll be with him than anything else I know. But I want to say real quick with the storm coming up, here in this particular passage, I want to say this. I certainly, along with, with Paul, here in this great storm, I want to say I believe God tonight regardless of the weather. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Good. Yeah. Good. It might be storming on the outside and it might be storming on the inside of your heart and life. I mean, your world may be crumbling. You may be falling apart. I mean, everything on the outside may look good, but the inside, there's a big storm like your rock, LaDonna, raging. I want to say tonight, I believe God when the suns are shining. I'm going to believe God when the storms are raging. I'm going to believe God when the birds are singing. And I'm going to believe God when the, the lightnings are, are flashing and the thunders are roaring. See, God's still God no matter what. God told Noah, uh, excuse me, God told Paul that they would, he, had, he would go to Rome. His destination was Rome. And listen, God's told you and I that one day, listen, he didn't promise us it's going to be a smooth sailing all along life's way. But I can assure you of this, I've read the last page in the last book. And it might not be smooth sailing along the way, but there's a safe landing one day on the other side of the sunny banks, a sweet deliverance. Oh, the old ship of Zion going to pull in. We're going to hook up and we're going to get out. Drop anchor on the other side. That's reality. I just believe God regardless of the weather. Going to. I don't listen. I don't know what tomorrow may bring but I know who brings tomorrow I know who's causing and allowing this thunder I know who brings the rain and allows the lightning I also know the one that allows the storms there's a reason things happen in our life it was said here tonight brother Phil as much as my heart goes out to you you've been a big blessing to me in one of the darkest times of your life you'll never know how and I'm going to go ahead and tell you brother Adam and I we talked about you back in the motel room <laughs> talk about how we'd like to set you down and you and Lawrence in the middle of our church Just could we borrow them for a day Oh, I could handle them. <laughs> Guarantee I could. Yeah. Let's believe God no matter what, church. Yeah. This wasn't what I'd planned to preach. I'll go ahead and be honest with you. I'm just trying to mind him. Believe God in the days to come no matter what the weather is. Right. Sometimes just to make the devil mad, I wear sunglasses when it's raining. <laughs> People look at you kind of crazy driving down the road, but I do it just to make the devil mad. It's a nanny nanny boo boo. But not only in the weather, but I believe God regardless of the wounds. So what do you mean, preacher? In Acts chapter 28, you know the story. Ship gets all busted up, but they all make it to land safe and sound. Here they are on an island called Melidia. The Bible says in Acts 28, he says, and when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melidia. And by the way, that name Melidia means place of refuge. <laughs> Woo! And the Bible says, And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire. In other words, they didn't show them a little kindness. They was real good to them. And received us everyone because of the present rain, because of the cold. 
Paul said in verse, or verse number 3, or, or rather the Bible says in verse 3, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on him. You know, the devil's good about showing up when the heat's on. Yeah, right. Praise God, you stir it up around here. He don't like it. No, right. You know something, you keep it hot enough, he'll stay away. Yeah. They can only handle the heat, they can't handle the fire. Right. <laughs> yeah, you keep the fires a burning. You let that remain. I promise you this. He might show up, but he's going to have to get. He can't handle it from the fire. Now watch this. Bible says in verse 4, when the barbarians saw that the venomous beast hang on his hand, uh, venomous beast uh, hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this, is a, this man's a murderer. Whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffer, uh, suffereth not to live. And he shook him, and he shook off the beast into the fire, and he felt no harm. <laughs> Tell you something about the devil. He's going to bite you when he can. And you understand what I'm saying. He's going to just come out from when you don't that's the thing I don't like about snakes they can be lying around anywhere and just my lord you can step on them or they can come up beside you kind of like rats I don't like rats either but here this snake just comes right out of the heat latches on to Paul. They knew that was it. That's a big one. Paul's gone now. It's going to kill him sure enough. Next time you remember what Paul done, next time it happens, you let's do what Paul done. He shook him off. Yeah. Get done. Yeah. Did him no harm. Yeah. There's a lot of wounds in life that come, into, come, come to us. We get wounded in all kinds of ways. Friends will wound you. Family will wound you. Get wounded financially. You can get wounded. Children can break your heart. Homes can bur bur uh, uh, break up. And I mean, so many things can happen that bring wounds into our life. But in the midst of the wounds, there's still a God that knows exactly what you go through. Knows how you're going to make it through it. He knows exactly when it's coming before he gets there. He knows what it's going to be before it ever happens. And that same God that protected Paul is the same God that will protect you. He'll protect me. He's made us that promise. God loves us. He cares for us. So I'm just going to believe him regardless of the wounds. I don't know what wounds you may be feeling tonight. I understand what wound feels feeling. I understand it. I can't relate to it because I still have my bride. I, but I understand it. It's, it's the most painful time in his life. But I'm going to tell you why he's here. He believes God yeah. is greater than his wound. Yeah. He believes and loves God and believes that God is able to heal him up. And he will heal him up. Yeah. Time, God sometimes uses time sure. to heal our wounds. Some wounds don't heal instantly. Right. Brother Mike Gibson bought me a nice toothpick knife down in Pigeon Forge the other week when we was on vacation. And I cut myself with it, not to see if it was sharp. I cut myself because it was sharp. Yeah. I didn't mean to, but I cut myself right here. End up 14 stitches. Yeah. Cut, I mean, I was just cutting a little limb. My daddy taught me how to cut limbs off of a tree with a little knife. He just cut them away from me. I did cut three off. Got back in my truck and looked. And I said, there's a sprig I missed. Jumped out of my truck, grabbed my little toothpick knife out. Cut that thing off and looked. And I said, I'm going to wrap a rag around that. Got going down the road and I, Felt something wet and it blood dripping. I called my wife and said, I need to get home, honey. I got to put a band aid on this thing. I said, You band aid nothing. You better get to Mert's room. Went to urgent care, got it sewed up. Point is this I was, it took that wound nearly two weeks to heal. Some of you in here tonight been carrying wounds a lot longer than that on the inside. 
Some of you have been carrying wounds a lot longer than two weeks. I promise you this. Just believe God. Keep believing Him. I got some family been away from God. Sons lost and on the way to hell. Been praying God to save them for I'm talking about immediate family. For a long time. Still ain't still ain't got in, still just doing what they're doing. Reveling in it. It's a wound. It hurts. Cry myself to sleep. A lot of times you can't cry no more. I'm just gonna believe God. I am gonna believe him. He's greater than any sin. Greater than any heartache. Greater than any trial. Greater than any wound we'd ever have. Just remember like Paul did. Believe God regardless of the weather. I don't know what what it's going to be. You know if it's going to be a day of sunshine tomorrow for you. Start out with the birds singing and all of a sudden you get a phone call. All of a sudden you come up on an accident and find out it's somebody you know. Don't know. Doctor comes in and says, listen, I need to talk to you. Boy, everything gets dark. You never know. Just keep believing him. Regardless of the weather, regardless of the wounds you get in life, and listen, Paul believed God regardless of the way this thing was going in for him. Paul went on to Rome. They beheaded him. Paul said this about it. He said, I'm now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. He said, hey, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. He said, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. I can see old Paul now looking up. In that guillotine, in that guillotine, I guess it's a guillotine. Just a looking. And about that time, saw that shiny blade come falling down. And that's from the body, he is present with the Lord. You won't scare me with dying. I can hear Paul say, go ahead, cut her, boys. Cut her, let her drop. Absent from the body, he was present. Just believe in God. I don't know what lies ahead for any of us. But I know who does. I know I know the one that knows the way. And I'm going to leave you with this. You want me to tell you really why we can really put our trust and believe God? It's right here. Watch this. Paul, when you study this chapter and you look at the story, Paul was going to be just fine and get to Rome, just like God told him he would. Why? How do you know that, Brother Bob? Well, first of all, because the course had already been planned. God planned it out. Number two, the cargo on board that vessel was precious. That's in verse 23, I believe. Paul was on board. That course had been planned out by God. You're heading to Rome. You're going to Rome, Paul. God said, one day, old ship of Zion's going to come pick us up. We're getting out of here. And guess what? On board that old ship of Zion, all this on board is this precious cargo. Watch this. Paul knew beyond any doubt he's going to get across because the captain was present. Look with me. Look with me, if you will, there in verse 23. He said, For there stood by me this night the angel of God. That wasn't none other. That was none other than Lord Jesus, the angel of God. He said, "Whose I am and whom I serve." And he said, "Fear not, Paul. 
For thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. That captain. You want to tell you something? In the Bible, Jesus got on a lot of ships, a lot of boats at times set sail. Not one of them ever sunk when he was on it. Right, right. Not a one. Right. When the Lord's the captain of your life, you can count on it, you'll not sink. Right. When, he, when you know he's in your heart, and you know you've been born again, and you know you're part of the family of God, your precious cargo. He takes care of us. Loves us. Cares for us. Knows what lies ahead. So in the days that come, Emmanuel Baptist Church has believed God. No matter what the weather is, what wounds come, what lies ahead.